Shut up and sit down. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ken Frederick Podcast. Today is April 28th. I want to say thank you for listening. And if you just stumbled across this online, you can check us out at kfpodcast.com and facebook.com slash kfpodcast. And Twitter. And Twitter at, at Ken, something with our at Ken Fred, Fred Podcast. Podcast. Yeah. Um, well, or just I'll, look at the link and click on it. All right. So I'll introduce everybody here. Which way are you going? I'll go right to left. So first, we have. Justin, how you the doing, cheese. everybody? <laughs> and to my left, it is the oh, one. Oh, you didn't like my cheese entrance? You didn't like that? <laughs> it was good. Well. And I'm the loudmouth, obnoxious <laughs> asshole that won't shut up over here. So Ken can do his intro. <coughs> Hi, how's everybody doing? His name's Don, by the way. Uh, yes. Yeah. I never say my name. That's why I never say it. No. All right. Well, they know I am. So it's just the three of us. Yeah, just the three amigos. Yeah. I could do the dance from the movie, but I don't remember it. You could. And I'm not putting that image up because it's annoying. Okay. So uh, today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about a little bit of some stuff, some things and stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about the death of Prince for a little bit. The singer. The not singer. <laughs> not a Prince. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, we're going to do a Ken Frederick podcast, top five things from the 80s. Cool. We're also going to, today is uh, April 28th, the superhero day. So we're going to go over that a little bit. Uh, then uh, we're going to give our Civil War predictions. And then uh, if we can, we have time, a little Nerd Week in review. All right. We're going to do 5,000 things tonight. <laughs> no, I think it's going to be a lot of quick stuff. And if All not, right. we'll cut it and do it some other time. Yeah. And yeah. We'll with see clever else. editing, you'll never know I said anything about it. You never it. know. When the cheese edits things, you never know. No, oh, never know. I'm getting good. All right. So first things first, because where else would you start? Prince passed away. What was it last week? Last Thursday. Last, last Thursday. We, we were good? doing our MCU talk. We didn't want to bring it down with some some yeah. sad news. Also, he died on the same day China from the WWE died, which is weird. Which I'm like a lot more upset that China passed away than I wasn't obviously because China was dumb. But well, she was a little. She went a little crazy, but she, a lot crazy. She turned. She painted herself green as the She-Hulk and had sex with Thor in a porno movie. Okay, yeah. That's, that's a little crazy. Well, she needed money. And she looks like a man, and yeah. it was weird. I felt bad for her. I well, feel like yeah. she had a pretty rough I mean, life. I feel bad when anybody dies, but China's a little nuts. I see, that's the opposite. I don't feel bad when everybody dies. Well, you're a heartless <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> everybody knows you don't have a soul, and that's why that happens, but... But I felt bad for her. I felt like she had a lot of life. She was young. But anyways, this is about Prince. This is about China. I had to throw that in there. Sorry. Uh, Just shut it's up. It's not about the Prince of China. China. For China Prince. Uh, China Prince. So. So the death of Prince. Justin, I, uh, what happened to him? So. <laughs> he died. He, yeah, he, he was in the middle of a tour. Uh, tour. He was flying, leaving his place in Minneapolis to fly, I believe, to Why Atlanta. Why was that funny? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Not laugh whenever I hear Prince in Minneapolis. I hear the Chris Rock bit. It's like there's only two black people in Minnesota, and that's Prince and Kirby Bucket. <laughs> every time, every time that pops in my head, they're like, there's only. I never even knew he, li- he lived in Minneapolis. Really, yeah. that's where he was from. Yeah. Wow. Um, anyway, he was he was flying out to a show. I think it was in Atlanta. The plane made an emergency landing in, somewhere in Illinois, and he was, he was rushed sick. to the hospital because he was sick. Yeah. He was supposed to stay there. He refused. He went. He did a show, and then he and then they flew back, flew home. And either the next day or the day after, uh, his manager found him at his place, and he was dead. And he lives by himself? Is that, that giant? Area? No, that giant compound all by himself. That's apparently. strange, isn't that strange? I feel like and a lot of things about him was. Like, well, yeah. I mean, I strange. love Prince, but I mean, you're in this giant compound by yourself. Like, is that where's the revolution? <laughs> why, aren't, why aren't they in there? Where's Shalimar? You know, where's Shalimar? <laughs> where's uh, where's, some, where's Apollonia? Yeah. No one was in that house with yeah. Carmen Electra. Nobody. 
<laughs> well, they, they dated in the early 90s. Yeah, but, so. you, know, you, would, you would think that the revolution would at least be there, <laughs> ready was, to go. All right, Justin, what was the band that's in uh, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back at the End? Worst more, Day in the Time. Where were they at? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say it like Jay because then I'd have to beep out myself in the podcast. Where was Morris Day at? Yeah. 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 God, no one's home. That's pretty sad, though, to die alone oh, in your oh, giant oh, mansion. Oh, yeah, yeah. And What's right mean? now. <laughs> un- He's singing Jungle Love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is one of the best scenes in that movie, though. We were talking about death. <laughs> yeah, but what's a celebration of life? It Dylan? is. It's true. Yeah. Um, I was pretty sad to hear that Prince died. I was. I was a big, big fan. Now, you're, Ken's not so much a fan of Prince. I wouldn't say I'm not a fan. I never got into his work. I, if I heard like Purple Rain on the radio, so that surprises me. It's like I don't know how you couldn't being in the '80s. If like like. We were like, oh, I don't want to listen to this song. Like Prince was well, everywhere. In the eighties, I was also I was born in seventy nine. Yeah. So like I was in my I was ten. You're only four years older than me. So, but I think that that's a big time. Like, well, I mean, he was still big in the nineties. Not ten. By the time ninety, <laughs> no, no, said, no, no, no. <laughs> what Don just said was, you're only yeah. four years older than me. Wow, right. right. I'm four years younger. <laughs> so we effed that up, is what you're saying, Justin, right? God damn it, the cheese is right. Yeah. That's why he's the he stats. made fun of me. <laughs> I quit. That's it. I'm out of here. I'll be back later when Justin goes back to being stupid again. <laughs> when, did, when did when did Purple Rain come out? Because his first album came out in the well, late seventies. If you have a stat man sitting across the uh-huh. table from you, so I think I feel like it came out like eighty three. Purple Rain was early. That was early stuff. It was like eighty two, eighty three. That little Prince driving that big motorcycle yeah, and all that. Nineteen eighty four. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I mean, yeah, honestly, I was when five. I was not, well, I wasn't super into it either. Yeah. I mean, I got into it later on. I didn't watch Purple Rain when I was <laughs> nine years old. I mean, my God, that would have been a little weird. But I definitely watched the video uh, for When Doves Cry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. My, my favorite Prince song, Little Red Corvette. Uh, it's... Justin would go to the store and buy a little Matchbox cars. He's like, <laughs> I look at this probably did have a little Matchbox Man. car. Little Red Corvette was a good song. Yeah. I, I mean, that one I liked. Uh, Kiss was a good song. Yeah. The entire Batman. That was a strange video, though, for Kiss. Do you remember that video? Is that where he's... I don't. Where there's, like, that girl that's way taller than him playing the guitar. Oh, well, yeah. Next to, to be him. fair, he was 5'2". Well, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he yeah. was he was a small dude. He's a midget. <laughs> he's a little dude. He was petite, Prince. Yeah. But, you know, he, he wore was, children's pants I mean, on What other guy could be, you know, short... Like he was, and dressed like a, like a weird bellhop of some sort and everything. But he was super cool. Yeah, you know, he had um, the, the, the fashion that that. I mean, I, wasn't it like a bell or like like what Dave Chappelle said? It was something like a figure skater would wear. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. Bel- Murphy yeah. said that. Velvet and so much velour, ruffles, just and- weird. <laughs> the weirdest outfit you've ever seen in your life. But I mean, he was super cool. I saw someone talking about him on on the news and they were saying how because I didn't realize this I realized Prince could you know I'm not a big music guy but I realized he could play guitar and piano yeah, and all very that. Good guitar. I didn't realize the amount of instruments he could play yeah. this guy said that he, they would go in and he was telling everybody in the band and he would go and play their instrument show them how to play it yeah and they'd be like I've been playing drums for like 25 years and he just walked in as like doing it better yeah playing the keyboard playing the piano playing this doing everything he can I mean he was so talented you know it's hard. You don't see many people that are that talented like that anymore. And it's it's from from a guitar standpoint. You know, when you look back at the greats of guitar, you think Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton. Uh-huh. People don't think about Prince, but he was on that level. He was amazing. Yeah, he was. And I just looked, Mr. Statsman. Twenty-seven different instruments he played. That's crazy. I can't even play one instrument. <laughs> I took piano lessons for five years. I can't even play. I can play maybe. Um, the Twelve Days of Christmas. Or, no. What about chopsticks? Can you do, 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 yeah, do, do, I can. Do, do, me and Saber do one together. I do the. I do the do 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 do. I just do. No, I can't even do that because she does that. I do the <laughs> ding 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 ding, ding, ding. and I mess that up every time, you know, because I can't get it right. But yeah, to play twenty seven instruments. That's crazy. What kind of? It's just you have to have a, a completely different mind from the rest. Oh, of yeah. the, planet to be able to well, do clearly that. his creative side was it the left side of the brain is is he's a very creative cat yeah which is weird because when you're so creative like that why do you get so super awkward then because like him and michael jackson a lot of like su- super creative super talented so socially like awkward so introverted yeah introverted personality yeah. so odd can't like you see when you see prince on tv it could barely like say anything all quiet you know 
So strange. Yeah, it's. I, I watched uh, a thing from Kevin Smith where. Of course. <laughs> Kevin Smith had to get in his podcast. Apparen- <laughs> He's got off his own damn podcast. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, Prince was a big fan of his. Loved okay. loved his movies, especially Dogma. Dogma was his favorite movie that, that Smith directed. All right. And he actually brought Kevin Smith out to his compound and had a documentary filmed about him. And it never saw the light of day. It's in a vault in his giant mansion. That nobody ever saw. That's so weird. Like, film this, but don't show anybody. That's weird. I feel like maybe after he dies, it's in his will that you can show it. Well, it's going to no, be all this weird shit in a, it. Apparently, he did not have a will. So his estate right now is in a weird limbo state. Which is crazy that the guy with that much money and uh, will. someone so will come in and buy it. And know well, it. his his kids will. He has his kids? kids? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Where the hell have I been? <laughs> but Too busy I, making fun of Shalimar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shalimar was the shit. <laughs> I, I was just looking up some other things. So everybody remembers when he became the artist formerly known right. as Prince. Wasn't that due to a lawsuit or something like yes, that? Yes, because his legal name is Prince Rogers Nelson. Yeah. So his first name was actually Prince. Okay. Warner Brothers in the early 90s decided that that was a brand. And there was contractual disputes, so he couldn't release albums under his own first name anymore. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, he just released them under the whole name. Well, no, that's when he went to the, the unpronounced The artist formerly yeah. known, yeah. The love symbol is, yeah, what, they, that was is weird. what it was. And then he'd make guitars out of it and stuff. That's oh. pretty cool, though. If I could make a logo of my name and then it became a guitar, I'd do it. <laughs> I wonder what your logo would look like. like a, right. I hate we say these things, then I feel compelled <laughs> to make an image out of it. You know, now, now your no, guitar has some goofy mustache and a weird <laughs> beard and hair. I'm going to call you out because there was no scrotum sanctuary in the last episode. Well, I just couldn't do a scrotum sanctuary. <laughs> it was too disgusting, the searches <laughs> that I was coming out with. And you're too lazy to draw it for me. But I was going to do it there and you yelled at me. I have. I have, to, I have to say, though, Ken Frederick as Daredevil was inspired. <laughs> it, was good. it was good. And you know when he watched it, he missed it, totally. I did. I didn't realize he didn't it. it. That's how much he pays attention. That's how much he cares, folks. Oh, stop <laughs> it. My viewer cut the top of the image off. That's right. So, yeah, Prince is a symbol. It was cool. Everything he was. did was cool back then. Uh, you know, my one of my favorite things of him was when, of course... Batman came out in 89. I was beside myself for that movie. I loved that movie at that time because it was all you had. You know, other than the goofy 66 Batman stuff, then you get yeah. you get this one. And he did the soundtrack for for the whole movie, yeah. which was so cool. And they used it all through it. And then he did the video. I'm going to talk about videos a lot tonight because we're discussing the 80s. That video was amazing. Yeah. I mean, he was half Joker, half Batman. Yeah. And each one, when he would turn, looked so cool. And then the hot Vicky Vales come out and all the weird yeah. stuff. You know, the yeah. video is just so badass. I mean, it was just so good. And he's up there, like, DJing and playing guitars and doing 100 instruments. And, you know, it's just a great song. You don't see people making stuff like that for a movie nowadays. It's not yeah. like some great artist. No, yeah. Justin Timberlake is not making a soundtrack for the Avengers. You know what no. I mean? Like, no one's doing that. Mm-hmm. Only he would do that and be like, wow, that was so cool. Like Prince made Batman really cool yeah. and, 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 aw- and great with that with that track, you know. But you just don't see anything like that nowadays. No, you don't. He was great. And then, of course, my other memory or thing that I love is the fact that Prince was such a good basketball player. <laughs> the Dave Chappelle skit with I mean, about it, Prince it, is amazing. Because when you first see that Dave Chappelle skit, if you don't know what we're talking about, go Google the Dave Chappelle Charlie Murphy talking about Prince. It's, it's a Charlie Murphy true Hollywood story, which is actually real, that Prince was really good at basketball and that he really beat Charlie Murphy and these guys in a game of basketball. I mean, the video is hilarious just how because they're dressed and they're cl- and that – and that figure skater outfit, and yep. they do the whole thing. But he's like, Prince was incredible, hitting threes and, and talking trash. Shoot the and, Jay. Shoot it. And then after the game was over, he took him in the house and made him pancakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just so, didn't you say there's an actual image of something like that? Yeah, there's an image uh, online. of, of It's Charlie Murphy like laying on the ground with Prince with his like, foot up on his chest. And it's like from that moment. Yeah, it's from that, it was that, that day. God, that would be great to see. Yeah, that'd found. be great. I mean, so. <laughs> what was the quote for me? He's like, what are we going to play? Shirts versus blouses? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then Prince wins, and he goes, winner, blouses. blouses. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hanging from the rim. But, well, you know, uh, God bless him. I mean, he was a great. it was great. I, I feel bad that he's passed. I feel like that's, you know, it's too young to go. It's weird if you think about, like, Michael Jackson, him, Whitney Houston, all these people that were like major pop icons, oh, yeah. now all agreed. gone. Yeah, 
and you know, so. David Bowie, like all that stuff from that time period. It's weird. It's it's strange. It's been a rough 2016. A lot yeah. of people. Yeah. A lot of people. So, you know, Prince, he made the 80s, 90s, all that stuff memorable. I have one Prince story real quick. The first time I was ever, uh, like... Masturbating. Well, the first time I was ever masturbating yeah. was to Prince. No. <laughs> it was to Apollonia. It was to Apollonia. <laughs> no, it was... Uh, so when I was... When the album first came out, mm-hmm. I remember my my family was real close with the next door neighbor's family. Okay. We grew up in an area of Evan City where everyone was real close. Okay. So I remember I, on the weekends... We would go over to their house, and my parents, their parents would play cards while I hung out with a kid my age, and my sister would hang out with a girl okay. her age. And the big, like, drama of the day was apparently my neighbor's oldest daughter bought Purple Rain and <laughs> listened to it. And this, so this, like, 12 year old girl owned Purple Rain. It was like all kinds of. And their things. life was changed forever. And her parents found it and was like, oh my God, what are you listening to? <laughs> and I wasn't, they listened to it, like, is like a group. In the, like while they're playing cards, like I can't believe my daughter's listening to this right now. It was like, and I think an inside image was like Prince in a tub, like yeah. naked. And, like it was all this uproar, and I remember just sitting there playing Secret Wars, black costume Spider Man and Magneto gun. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> what's this Purple Rain? Yeah. That's a weird thing. And everyone was so like they were so up in arms about it. But I was like, that's the first time I remember hearing Prince. Like it was like, is that the only movie he ever did, or didn't he do one? Another one after that was kind of just like Purple Rain because I think Morris and a Time were in it again. It was kind of a, there was another one I forget what it was. Was Morris and the Time? Did they have their own movie? Like no, they, that was just Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. It's like when we're on this podcast and we just start thinking about what things were <laughs> like no research no. or anything like that. You know, well, it's like a conversation you would have with us if you saw us in, and and person. And right now it's just me and Ken. We're just distracted because yep. he is hard at work on that laptop trying to figure it out. Okay, so. This doesn't say whether he made the movie. This is just movies he's appeared in. Okay. So, Purple Rain, obviously. There was Purple Rain 2, the Purple Rain. <laughs> Under the Cherry Moon. Uh, that's, that's a weird movie. 1986. Okay. Uh, Sign of the Times in 87. That was like a performance piece, I think. Yeah. Okay. And Graffiti Bridge in Graffiti 1990. Graffiti Bridge was the movie okay. I was thinking of. Yes. And then, <laughs> I may have to go back and watch the 89 Batman now, because apparently he appears in the movie a few times, but it's like... In He's a flying background. in the background. It's a background Justin's shot doing somewhere. Flying <laughs> Prince just swoops down in, in, in the back of the, in the background. But, yeah. I don't remember Prince in that movie at all because no. I've seen that movie about 145 he times. He plays Harvey Dent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you know, like I said, God bless Prince. Rest in peace. But since we're talking about Prince, we started thinking about what other things of the 80s in our childhood did we really enjoy. So we decided to do. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, 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 bah. The K and Ken Frederick podcast top five. And the five. name is what? Dude, we were too busy doing the jingle, which is a horrible jingle. The KFP top five. So who wants to go first and talk about their top five? Well, if you look at the paper, we put the cheese oh. first. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'll go first. Oh, and let me just do a little quick story here. <laughs> this goober had a hard time coming up. Why well, you got to put five things down? I can't think of five things. We're like, you can't think of five things. There was a whole decade, ten years of things. Justin hated everything except and everything. Me. He's like, I never liked the '80s. I hated the '80s. Who hates the '80s? I, I just never Who got hates into the time the 80s? period. Yeah, who's just against the time period? I don't. I mean, now as I've gotten older, like some of the music has come back, and I like, I like some of the '80s music. Just because it's not house music, he doesn't appreciate. Uh, actually, well, a lot of that stuff sounds like house. But so I had to. That's nice. That's what Justin listens to the entire way he's driving to work. At a time, I'm going up to visit my parents in New York. Just the whole entire time, right? That's pretty good, though. Pretty much. I should be a DJ, make tons of money, and wear a stupid rabbit on my head or something like that. It's a mouse. It's a mouse. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Okay. <laughs> I do know a little bit about that. Right. So I, I was, I, I came up with a few things okay. that, I, you, that I that I missed because it I is did. a top five. So yeah, that, I five 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 five. <laughs> that I did miss. Saturday morning cartoons in the eighties were the greatest. Mm-hmm. There was yeah. nothing better than waking up on Saturday morning, getting your bowl of cereal. And just sitting there and watching cartoons. And it wasn't SpongeBob or something. No, stupid it was, like that. and you know what? And like. Because sometimes I'll still watch cartoons, even though I'm 37 years old. Surprise. Um, like, when I watch Adventure Time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, i got to wait seven months for a new episode. <laughs> Not like, I felt ba- like back then at the time period, every time I watched a cartoon, it was a new cartoon. It was never new. Yeah, and, what, and the thing about it was, they didn't make things continue. Now no. everything is like, 
this cartoon or what's going to happen on the next part. Yeah. It was just random because, craziness. Yeah, they're, they're you turning, can watch them completely out of order and have yeah, no clue what's going exactly. on, but it's fine. They're, they're turning cartoons into sitcoms where everything yeah. has to connect. and yeah. and Because well, we're watching them, right. not children. Because well, yeah, children true. are playing Minecraft. Because us idiots are watching yeah. it. Yeah. So what's next? So the next thing was, uh, do you remember the, like the Scholastic Book Club days at school? Yes. I never learned to read so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was about a week ago. Well, what's, what's weird, though, is I really didn't like to read as a kid. But I used to love these <laughs> stupid book club days because they had other stupid stuff other than they books. Still have you mean like now. to go buy books at school? Yeah, or, they okay. would. Yeah, they would. They would bring in like these big cases, and yeah. you had oh, yeah. you had that little paper. You had to check off what you it wanted. It was very similar to like the the Santa's Elf workshop. Did you have those in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I remember yeah. that. I used to do like my. They Christmas. have those now, but they're all online. Okay. Now they just give us a form. We go online and order books. Uh, okay, all right. and That's the weird. kids all like it because they're like, I don't want a book. I want. The Star Wars book because it comes with a lightsaber pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's twenty eight dollars. I'm like, you're getting a book, <laughs> not the goddamn lightsaber pen. Okay, that's not what we're here for. This is reading. So then, getting a little bit more specific, there was a show in the eighties. Oh, there um, we go. This, I absolutely <laughs> shut up, Ken. I absolutely loved the show, and I think it was only on one season, and it never made it to like a DVD recut or anything. Okay. I'm sure it's you cannot way. find. I can't find it. I've been looking for the show for five years. It was called Misfits of Science. Ugh. <laughs> I, I would hear it. about this show it for was, years. It he was, talks about this show all the time. It was a great show. Um, and then, uh, go ahead. What the hell are you looking at? Nothing. You're no, trying was, to make fun of me. No, no, no. 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 Go ahead. We were connected in brain for a minute. Cause yeah, I, <laughs> we were. Go ahead. We're just researching. And go then ahead. a couple movies that stand out that I can still watch to this day. Okay. Do you remember Rad? The oh, BMX bike oh, yeah, movie. Yeah. Was that Send Me an Angel? Send Me an Angel. <laughs> yep. Um, and another, a young, hot Aunt Becky. I was worried where you were going. <laughs> Lori, Lori Laughlin played the love, the love interest oh, in, that, in that movie. Yeah. And She's then, still to this day, my favorite movie of all time, The Princess Bride. Oh, that's oh, any, that, yeah. anybody yeah. want a peanut? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my top. We five. had a brute squad image on the podcast. <laughs> oh, I love a good. Uh, brute give me squad. the line. When they call the brute squad, <laughs> I am the brute squad. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are the brute squad. <laughs> I'm on. The, no, he says I'm, I'm on, on the, the brute squad. squad. You, you are, are the brute squad. <laughs> Bye, okay. boys. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. So uh, what I else you have? That. How many you got? That's that's my five things. Is the 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 two movies? The that's show. not like three. Well, it All depends right. if you well, combine yeah. the movies and show. Okay. If you combine movies and show, <laughs> then you get a movie show. Yeah. <laughs> a movie show. But anyway, so that's my you get five. Ca- half cartoon, half half oh. cartoon movie. <laughs> About three weeks <laughs> in a row. Bringing that up. You're the one who hated putting that image oh, together, but you're the one who brings it this up. This is a great line. Uh, All right, awesome. So, all right, so that's that's my 80s right. memorabilia. You want me to go next there? You are next on the list. All right, Ken Frederick Show. All right, so one of my favorite things being a kid was always playing outside in the 80s. We would play, I mean, there were, in an Italian neighborhood I grew up, there was always a ton of kids, and we would play war. Where you just, there was no BB guns or no paintballs. It was just the honor system. If I got you lined up with my plastic gun from the toy store, you were dead. You had to lay down for two minutes before you could come back. You didn't have to, all the stuff that they use nowadays and and that. And it was great. We would play war all day long. Wow. Especially after watching Red Dawn. Oh, and they were like, oh, that Red is a Dawn. Great Let's go fight movie. some. Somebody was going to be the Russians. Other people were going to be the, the Wolverines. What was Wolverines. the other one about the kids at the boarding school? Toy soldiers. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Yes. So yeah, we would play outside constantly. I used to love it. It was so much fun. I used to. I didn't have a lot of kids in the neighborhood, but when we get together, we used to play wiffle ball in our other neighbor's house. Mm-hmm. And the only I remember, we would break their window all the time. My dad got so pissed all the time, constantly breaking windows with the wiffle ball. We used to play this game called Spotlight. Oh, and, Spotlight's yeah, great. Where and we would have a base. You'd play it in the dark. I and think that uh, the Parliament Funkadelic song, Spotlight, was based and, and on this Let me see if you played it the same way. So you would right. have to call, like if, if we were to get, trying to get you out, we found you. We'd have to call Spotlight on Ken and call where you were at. And, and you would say it out loud so that people could hear it. And uh. what, our, the trick we would do then is switch clothes. <laughs> so I'd wear like your sweatshirt and you take my hat. Because if you called the wrong person, then they were safe. They would have a safe uh. pathway to the bank. So you go like, Spotlight on Ken. And he would go, ah, ha, 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 this is dawn underneath there. Oh, they're switching clothes again. Poor kids in the neighborhood would spotlight with me. It's like, Spotlight on Ken. There's this child, <laughs> tiny child, <laughs> giant clothes. <laughs> Like, and then, you, then we had boundaries, and of course I'd always run out of the boundaries and cheat and you know walk around well, it. That's part of it. Yeah, so there's that one. Number four, 
for me were cartoons with public service announcements at the uh. end of them. Particularly <laughs> He-Man and G.I. Joe. Poor <laughs> John Savage. <laughs> Is I must have learned so many ways of being a proper person from watching He Man and GI Joe. Clearly, none of them work. So first off, He Man would always give you some lesson in like some well, because knowing lesson. is half the battle. That's GI Joe. No. God damn it, Justin, that's the wrong show. He Man would give you like a life lesson. Like he'd be like, "Today, I was really angry with him, yeah. and his anger led to this." And I'd sit there and be like, yeah, "That's right, He Man." Like you know, He Man could tell me anything. I'd be like, "All right, yeah, I agree." GI Joe would give you. Like the safety warning, yeah, like the, okay, like the, yeah, the yeah. idiot kids are in there and their mothers burning hamburgers, <laughs> like I, like me cooking, and then and then and then like you know flamethrower or one of or barbecue would come by the window and go, kids hit the deck. He wouldn't save the kids. He'd be out by the window going, you better get on the floor. You're gonna burn to death. Don't touch that doorknob. And then the kids would get out and he'd be like, what'd you learn today? And he'd be like, you're a horrible <laughs> superhero. You didn't save my life. Or the best, my favorite. There's a kid drowning and he got a cramp. And the kid's like, I'm drowning. And all of a sudden, like, Torpedo shows up in, in the water. And he goes to the kid. <laughs> no, I remember. It was who is. He, he's cutting me off. <laughs> and he goes to the kid. <laughs> he doesn't save the kid. But he tells him, cup your fingers in your hands and move in a scissor motion, which doesn't work because I tried it in the water. And the kid's like, I'm doing it. And he's like, you're treading water. Now you know. Like, you've got to save that kid. He's in nine feet deep of water. And he's drowning, Torpedo. Was Torpedo the one that had the like the sailor hat and wore like no, that's that's shipwreck. Oh, yeah. It was I remember that episode and I think it was shipwreck. No, torpedoes in the water. Shipwreck had a different one. Okay. The shipwreck came later on. I'm a GI. I know. I just I, I thought I remembered <laughs> shipwreck in, in one where he had he a great one where he didn't save a kid from. Drowning. I'll tell you another great one. There's a guy that's gonna come like rape kids because he calls the house. This creepy guy goes. I don't think they said he was gonna. No, rape the come kids. on. He calls the house. Is your mom home? And they're like, No, we're here alone. And then this creepy car pulls up and he's like getting out and then big ass roadblock because walking down the road and they're like roadblock and the guy takes off and they're like that kid that guy was up to no good uh, why am I doing Mr. T uh, and he yells at the kids and the kids are like like and he's like never tell that your mom and dad aren't home it was great like like it was gonna get a little rapey in there if roadblock didn't show up did he have a cell phone how would he get to this house like is that one home? I don't know. He just <laughs> showed up real fast, but it was crazy. But anyway, mine are taking forever, so let me speed through them. That's all right. My next one was TBS Night Tracks, which if you don't know Night Tracks, know me Night and my tracks. sister, Alyssa, used to stay up on Friday nights and wait for – they would start the top ten at like 10 o'clock at night. And it was every – hit song that was currently on it showed a video for. This is why my sister and I are experts on videos from the, from the 80s. I'll be like, did you ever see the video for uh, Red Red Wine by UB40? I'll be like, no. Why, why, did I, why would I know that video? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like, you know like, I say this all the time to say everyone. She's like, I didn't see any of these videos. I've seen every video. I used to love new videos. Not as much a song, just what was going to be the new video. Then they would show videos all night long. And then at like 2 a.m. they would give you like new artists and stuff like that. She used to get, we used to get so excited about it. But anyway. Another, like, all mine are on TV. Yeah. That's all I did. I had one playing outside. I still Friday night TV because I used to love Dukes of Hazard and Knight Rider on the same damn night. It was the best. There was nothing be better than watching a little. What else was on with A-Team? Because A-Team was during that time period, too. A-Team was good, but uh, Dukes oh. of Hazard was Friday nights, 8 o'clock, and then Knight Rider would come after, which. All right, do you guys remember? I used to, I used to watch this with my parents. Do you remember the Scarecrow and Mrs. King? Oh it sounds God. familiar. I was watching that. My grandmother would watch that. Show. <laughs> I just love that I remember that. Scarecrow. And Mrs. the King. reason I love Dukes of Hazard, of course, was Daisy Dew. Well, I mean, who? I mean, uh, what, who didn't have a crush on? What was her name? Who played Catherine Bach? Played Daisy Duke. Right. And she was so hot, and that car was so cool. You know, that was back when people weren't so uptight, and everything was, you know, I know they had a Confederate flag and all that, but it was like, you know, you know, the Duke boys were nice. They're nice and, boys. Yeah, they were good kids. They and were they weren't allowed to have... Good, old, wholesome moonshiners. And they weren't allowed to have guns. <laughs> but they were allowed to have bow and arrows with TNT on you. They exploded. Because yeah. you don't want to hurt somebody with a gun. They're on probation. <laughs> the but 80s. they would always just pull that bow and arrow on and be like, what the... And blow something up. In the 80s, that was okay. In the 80s... It was weird because everything was allowed to explode, but no one ever died from it. G.I. Joe no. had so many explosions. I, cartoons. Right. I remember you could shoot towards... Because people were always in front of it. So yeah. if you... 
exploding arrow behind him. The force yeah. would send him flying, yeah. knocked him out, no one was dead. I remember there was a huge controversial ish, uh, episode of the A-Team because it was either Murdoch or Face actually got shot. Yeah. And they actually showed blood in, like, prime couldn't do that. Prime, yeah, they couldn't do that back in the day. Then I would watch Knight Rider at 9, and Knight Rider was awesome. Of course, Kit was great and, and the whole thing in the car. I mean, who didn't want to have Kit? David you know, Hasselhoff. I mean, David Hasselhoff had the original Apple Watch. <laughs> you know what I mean? He had that Apple Watch before anybody oh, had yeah, yeah. talking into it, you know, Siri and everything on it. It was Kit, though, but it was great. Another car show, real quick, little note, Ken. <laughs> Me and Ken talk about this show. <laughs> The show is called Auto Man. Auto Man. Auto. Now, I don't, I've never watched the show live. The like, reason why he talks about it is because it was only about six episodes. <laughs> and I told him a story before that my father and I uh, love this show because it was a <laughs> robot. It was Desi Arnaz Jr. <laughs> as a detective. Kills. And then it was this guy who just had a human face, kind of like half half human, half whatever. But he had the, he had the face and if then this. Digital body. It was very much like Tron. Yeah, it was like Tron. It was a Tron ripoff for a TV show. Yeah. But the coolest thing is he had a damn cursor that would draw out cars and planes. And me and my dad thought it was the shit. We were like, <laughs> this is the... We would sit there and be like, Auto Man's on. This He made a car. He made a helicopter. And then the season finale, he makes a tank. And we were like going crazy over it. We were like, Auto Man made a tank. It's the greatest. But, you know, it was it never lasted and it was goofy. But me and Ken watched the uh, half our YouTube video. Oh, it was a whole documentary about it. We watched it and we were glued to it. It was until like 3 in the morning. Crazy. Man. Auto Man. All right, so my number one, no particular order, but my number one, I'll keep it short, is Transformers. Transformers were the 80s for me. The 85 movie, which was my favorite movie ever when I was a kid. I think it's probably still my favorite movie ever. <laughs> Optimus Prime dies. It crushed me as a kid. I like didn't know what to do with my... I walked out of that movie crying. But I was like 10 years old. You would have thought my mother died. How sad I was that Optimus Prime was dead. <laughs> well, my buddy Mike Taylor also he has a story about he went and saw it at the movie theater with his dad. And he like burst into tears whenever Optimus well, Prime... Yeah, I mean, because in the movie when you're watching it, like the Autobots are getting their ass kicked. And then Prime shows up. Puts a can of whoop ass on everybody. I'm like, yeah, this is this is my movie right here. And then I'm like, what what's this? He's he always gets back up. I'm like, and then I didn't want to watch the rest of the movie. I was like, I don't want to stay here. I don't leave. I, I care less about this movie. I was so pissed. It, it, I mean, if the internet was around back then, like the oh. outcry would have destroyed that movie. But you know, they had to bring him back just from fans writing angry letters. Oh yeah. They eventually brought him back. But Transformers were the best. They were the best toys to play with. The only problem with Transformer toys when you're a kid and oh. you had 25 Autobots and 25 Decepticons and you got them up in their vehicle mode and you'd be like, all right, everybody transform for your fight. It was two and a half hours <laughs> later. But I'd get the one side done and be like, oh, God, all right. Next side, I'd be like, uh, and then I'd lay on my floor and literally pass out. <laughs> my mother would come in and go, time for dinner. And I'd be like, what the hell happened? <laughs> like I was playing Transformers, I just completely passed out because it took forever, you know. Right. But that's my list. I'm sorry, it took forever, but yeah, that's, that's how I am. And on to Ken's. All right, so I'm gonna kind of take over where you left off okay. about '80s toys, because my favorite '80s toy of all time and other toys is Mask. I m -m -m -mask. mask. And one of the best uh, entrances I thought for a cartoon. And that I also really liked good. that if I watched a cartoon of it. So the main character was Matt Tracker, and depending on what the mission was, he would call different members in. So I'd be like, oh, this is a, I haven't seen this guy do this car yet. And like mm -hmm. you know, all this different stuff. It was great. I loved it. It was it was very it was Hasbro too. No, it was Kenner. Kenner did that. Kenner, okay. But it was very much like a, almost like a Transformer yeah. ish show, right? It was very much like if you combine Transformers and G.I. Joe G.I. Joe together, you got mask. Because it was a guy who had a car that could turn into a jet. Yeah. And they fought Venom, which wasn't Cobra, but yeah. it was so um, Did but, you ever see these? Do you remember that? I, I had I had the toys. I remember the show. So you're big on masks now. I was. Uh, I'll have to, can I take a picture of my mask collection? So you, you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah, give it to me. Yeah. yeah, Ken has a huge mask collection in his living room. I still have an '80s boxed Halloween costume. The old '80s Halloween costume that was like plastic mask and weird like schmock thing. Yeah, and those I, weird outfits. Yeah, I have one in the. I have one in the. And remember, every helmet they wore had a different power. Oh yeah, it yeah. was like uh, I always remember Lifter was the the uh, Asian dude. 
that was in Rhino had it. <laughs> I can't remember his name, but he would be like, lifter on. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, a rock would levitate and fall on the road. And be like, ah. Oh. And then all of a sudden. So, great. Some of the best action figures with their toys, though. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. they were to scale, but they were small, but they were still articulated. They are yeah. more articulated than a lot of stuff that you can get nowadays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were awesome. I mean, they were real tiny, but the vehicles were great. Yeah. I mean, what a toy to play with. Oh, it's fantastic. And it didn't to, take as long as transforming things. No, because it was all buttons. Yeah, like, they went pretty quickly. Yeah. You, you were ready to go pretty quickly. Yeah. You no. weren't transforming Metroplex for an no, hour. You know, yeah. it wasn't like that. Now, when I so when I got into wrestling in 80s toys, mm -hmm. I started one Christmas, because this is my next thing, is wrestling was a big part of my childhood in the 80s. Mm -hmm. My parents were actually fans of wrestling. I actually got to go to the Civic Arena and see Hulk Hogan fight the Iron Cheek one night. Like, I, I was going, and my mom was always a fan of wrestling more than my dad was. So, like, the 80s for me is, like, hanging out and watching, like, superstars. And, like, me and my sister were both into it. So, like, even up until my mom passed away when I was in high school, a lot of Saturday nights, if there was nothing going on, I was fine. Because that means me and my mom would sit around and watch ECW and other late night That's wrestling cool. stuff. That's cool. So, um... But in the 80s, I would take – it doesn't matter what toy line it was. I would take all my toys, and then I would get a shoebox as my wrestling ring, and I would set up matches for hours. I even had an arena, like arena, like a piece of plywood that I drew a crowd on in a walkway. Like I had it all set. And uh, so, like, the mask characters were, like, the midget wrestlers because the <laughs> they were the smaller ones. But then I had, had little like, luchadors from Mexico. Because yeah, they had masks. I thought yeah. it was great. I was like, oh, all right. Great. <laughs> And um, I had some, like, Transformers were, like, the big guys. And I had, like, Thundercats were a little bit bigger than those guys. Yeah. So it was depending on what size. So I'd be like, oh, well, these three G.I. Joe guys are going to fight against the Thundercats guy. Purely based on size. And That's then it was great. these giant wrestling matches. And, you know, kids don't do that stuff anymore. No. Because they have a – there's a toy for everything nowadays. So you yeah. would just have to go well, spend $35. Why would you do that when you can buy the wrestling game and then you can just play wrestling Yeah, you can just play Which it. is what I do now. Because that, that's what I used to do for – not like you with wrestling, but I used to take my G.I. Joe's oh, tell and, the <laughs> and cops figures. Can remember the show Cops? Oh, I love the show Cops. Cops is a great show too. What was it and crime? Fighting crime um, uh, in the future time. Now, what did Cops stand for? That was like Central Organization <laughs> of Police Specialists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bravo. Fighting crime in the future time. And the, and the black dude that was bulletproof, well, BB vest. The toys were great because they actually had caps. They were cap guns. They, yeah, and they were G.I. Joes, but were like double the size of a G.I. Yeah, Joe. Yeah. So I, I I, was huge, of course, in comics. I was bigger than the X-Men. Uh -huh. And they didn't sell X-Men toys. No. And they didn't sell anything cool like that. So I would make my G.I. Joes X-Men. And the cops mm -hmm. guys were like Colossus or the bigger dudes yeah. or whatever. And I used to take like white out and paint storm shadow to make him look like Iceman. Uh. And then I would take McDonald's straws <laughs> and put them on their hands as like their energy or their lightning. And that like, so if like storm, she would shoot like these things and I'd paint them. And it'd be like yellow lightning was yellow straws. I had people would come over to my house and kids would go, what are all these GI Joes that are ruined with <laughs> straws? And then, and I would take like, <coughs> um, Paper clips and make Wolverine claws and <laughs> Captain America shields out of duct tape. No one does that shit nowadays. But anyway, I remember whenever my grandparents, I'd go over there. My grandmother would save all the sandwich swords. She's like, I figured you could use these oh, for your toys. So those are great. They did the same they were thing. like, oh, and then everyone had a fencing battle because mm -hmm. they're <laughs> real thin the swords. But my Hulk Hogan show. action figure uh -huh. was um, Juggernaut. Oh well, of course. There's that big Hulk Hogan with the hands that only went like this. Well, you that's know that where one? my affection for Andre the Giant was for Chris. Christmas one year, I got the LGN Andre the Giant figure. And they were was, huge. Oh, my God. Just rubber. I, I got so mad at my sister one time, I whipped it at her. I thought... I'd like, <laughs> Did she die? <laughs> Is she no longer with us? Of course. <laughs> I did, was never good at sports. So I did not. Oh, my God. Because that thing must have weighed five pounds. Oh, it was great. I, I would, One of the things I'm what hunting for... What kind of wrapper did they come in at the they, store? They just... Because we... One of the stores that I'm affiliated with has yeah. some in stock. It was just cardboard back, plastic over top of it. But there's no way you can keep... the. the no way they hung on a... No. Yeah. Oh, my God. It would bend the peg hook. If you got a shipment of Andre the Giants in, the whole peg board would break. <laughs> the whole wall's coming down. Yeah, there's no way there's... Oh, I'd love to see one in a package. I'm actually... that's like, that's like I didn't my, say I'd love to see a package. <laughs> I said I'd like to see one of the figures in a package. Uh, that's on my want list, because I'm trying to collect Andre the Giant action figures now. Because oh, cool. I have an old uh, Hasbro with the... like. Andre figure that You I better found. be careful going down this top or we're going to talk about how you dress as Andre the Giant for <laughs> Halloween. And uh, I will put that picture online. Well, I think we've already <laughs> figured that out then. So, 
We'll just skip that. <laughs> Andre the Giant. So wrestling was always a big part of it, and that's uh, that's number two. So uh, number three, I'm going to go with Christmas time in the 80s. There was always something on te- television to watch, like, and your parents would be like, oh, they'd stop my show because of this stupid thing. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas was my favorite Christmas 80s thing. It's just I have it on DVD. It's amazing. I love everything about it. Like, I also watch every once in a while, but it's a little, it's a tough watch 20 years later, but it's it's still good. Uh, then the movies. I know Justin already picked apart and said about Rad, but The Breakfast Club and uh, 16 Candles were amazing 80s movies. See, I, I didn't get I didn't get into those until later. I did, much, but it's 80s, later. so I'm going to get well, it because yeah, I can right, watch those right. anytime. Cool. And... Last but not least, uh, my one of my favorite things about the '80s was family vacation. We never flew anywhere, <laughs> as we talked about. Family truckster. <laughs> so my Went dad. With walls. With Fredericks. Yeah, we never. We had a. We always had a Buick. So my dad always bought. So it'd be me, and my older sister, and my mom and dad driving to Biloxi, Mississippi, oh, from Pittsburgh, <laughs> Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. That's Biloxi great. Biloxi and Pearl, Mississippi. We'd drive down to that, for vacation. Track. So wow. we'd, and we'd stop. And also, too, most of the time, these Buicks did not have air conditioning. Yeah, no, they uh, didn't, yeah. <laughs> so, She's in the back of a, a uh, station wagon, hot as hell, sweating. Cl- closer than me and Don, and couldn't cross the line. Sitting backwards? Was it a station wagon? No, no, no. It was, oh, like, okay, it was, okay. it was a sedan. I, my family, unfortunately, had one of those, and my ass always sat in the back. <laughs> we, we had a station wagon grow, for a little while growing up, but I don't remember... I was an only child. I don't know why my parents bought a station wagon. <laughs> but for all the shit they're gonna buy you because you're spoiled. Um, Fill it with toys. Um, but uh, I, I remember we. I remember having. And there was a comedian. I can't remember who it was. Who said whoever sat in that back seat had an entirely different vacation than the rest of the family. Oh, um, I don't know who it is, but that was. I think it may may have been that one albino comedian. No, it's a for, Ryan. Oh. Anyway, we'll skip past that. But, but he was. That's that was me. Because at night we would all lay in the, the all the seats would be down. You'd be laying no yeah. seat belts, completely oh, no. unsafe. And then, and then I'd be in the back facing everybody else, uncomfortably looking at them. Yeah. Like, oh hey, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sorry, I'll just look over here. And I'd be like, can he please pass us? I'm looking at the same family <laughs> for an hour now. It was it was funny. Anyway, what's but your next one? That's it. That's my five. All right. Uh, the the wrestling and the the figures kind of mesh together. Mesh it all together. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one real quick story about vacation. I remember one time. We were driving through somewhere. I think it was the foothills, like Kentucky, Tennessee. But I'll never forget this. We came across this place where they had live black bears in, like, this, like, habitat, I guess. But you could put a quarter in, like, a gumball machine to get some food and, like, throw it to the bears. And I don't know why this was allowed. And (laughs) this just seems, like, so odd. But there's pictures somewhere of me feeding black bears out of a gumball (laughs) machine. I was an odd it's like, photo. It's like a petting I, zoo. But I, I wish I could yeah. find this photo oh. so I could put it on the YouTube video. I, like, right. see, I could just find some misfit kid feeding <laughs> bears to a, blackberries to a bear. I wish I had these pictures, but uh, uh, through the years, they've all, a lot of the, my pictures yeah, got that's lost. Sad. That's tough. But, um, yeah, it's there's uh, – I have to talk to my that sister would, about that. That would be funny to oh. find that. I remember going – some odd-ass places. Like on, going to, like, the Toronto Zoo when I was a kid, and they had a bear – Going outside the country, I see. That you would, I think it was, anyway, you they had a tube that went down into its enclosure, and you could throw peanuts down the tube, <laughs> and it would eat the peanuts. <laughs> yeah, I would never have that nowadays. No! I just threw some boys in the, <laughs> yeah, there's some Pepto-Bismol. All right, well, that's a wrap on, the, on our top uh, yeah. fives or whatever the hell we were talking about. <laughs> And let's go into a real quick superhero day. Hey, happy superhero day! Yeah, yeah so it's it's National Superhero Day in the U.S. This is this is a, a U.S. national. Oh, I better write that yeah. down. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's it's and it's not actually a Hallmark thing, which which surprised me. <laughs> no, um, it's buying cards for superhero, of course. <laughs> but anyway, so like Don said, real quick, I just thought this was kind of neat. It was created by Marvel employees in 1995 um, as just kind of a day to celebrate superheroes. And what the Marvel employees, they got hooked up with some charities. And what the way people celebrate it right now is a lot of people dress up as superheroes. 
<laughs> and go to children's hospitals dressed up as superheroes okay. to hang out with the kids. And they give out ca- like superhero capes to the kids. And it's just kind of a neat charity thing that, cool. that they do. So I just thought that was kind of neat that we're it, it's superhero day. We're talking about comics. and So we yeah, figured let's nerd it up a little bit. Yeah. And we'll say, well, we fought about this a little bit. But we were <laughs> going to say an interesting conversation. I always like to have this of if you could pick one superhero power. And I'm not saying I want to be Superman. You get to be Superman. That's lame. You got to be. I'm Don Bjorn. You got to be a little creative about yeah. it. So I don't even like to do why well, I want super strength. I we we voted that we, you should have probably three. If you could mix them, create your own power. You fall in a vat of chemicals. You get hit by radiation. You get bit by a radioactive porcupine. Whatever it is, you do. <laughs> oh, why'd you ruin it? <laughs> what would this person be? And let's go to the man, Ken. And well, ask. real quick, should we talk about the hashtag that we want to do for this? And all this yeah, stuff? sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. W- we want to talk about what we want to be as superheroes, but that also means we want to hear what everyone listening wants to be as superheroes. So we decided we're going to do a hashtag, and the ones we like the best, or if only one person does it, guess what? Yours is the best, because yeah. you only did it. <laughs> and we're going to give you nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we're, but we're, we'll say your name, read your powers, then make fun of you And then I'll the draw podcast. a picture of your superhero and we'll put it online. Oh, I want that. <laughs> I, was, I was getting excited. Wizard issue 15 Ooh. tablets coming out. <laughs> we'll get into that a whole other time. <laughs> so, so uh, hashtag, that's the pound symbol for you old people. So, hashtag KFP superpower. We looked on Twitter. No one's hashtagging this. Right. So this will be our own We want to get it trending. <laughs> We're never going to get it trending, but it'll give us a reason to look for this and actually start using all the social media that we cool. are trying to use. So, hashtag KP, KFP superpower. Stare up at the screen. It's looking at you. All right. So, first things first. I'm a little on the spot because I figured I'd just go. Okay. But, all right. So... We were joking around before, and I'm like, I would like to we'll be able to walk on water, be able to move large boulders. Turn water into wine. <laughs> Turn water into wine. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> Take one piece of fish, feed the entire village. What was it? Molecular reconstruction? Right. Only for food? And, you're, and, and the power would be called life of the party. Because <laughs> let's face it, Jesus was the life of the party. Yeah. But no, I've always, I've always liked, I never want to, like, the ability to fly to me seems like lame. I don't know. Like, yeah. It, it, because there's, um, I forget, there's a great meme or something. It's like, if people were able to fly, people wouldn't because they'd think it'd be exercise. Like, there'd be right. some reason why they wouldn't. Yeah, I gotta fly. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, annoying. So That's true. I always liked invisibility. Everybody'd be real fat just flying <laughs> yeah. around. There's no one's walking. Yeah. Just huge blobs of fat people <laughs> floating through the air. Look at this. <laughs> that guy's 800 pounds, yeah. but he can go to Wendy's every day because yeah. he can fly. Fly. <laughs> oh, what's the time? You have to but, get one in there. <laughs> so I've always liked invisibility. I've okay. always liked super strength. And I don't know. I feel like I should shoot something, but I don't really know what. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Giant loads. <laughs> I already have that superpower. <laughs> I thought your power was going to be like, you know, I always wish I could be invisible, uh, completely, like, intangible, quiet, have really good eyesight. Like, are you just sneaking into girls' locker rooms? Is that all you're doing? Like, I no. Said, I said uh, invisibility, uh, super strength, and I don't know. I don't want to shoot anything. You like, do want to. <laughs> okay. Maybe, like, super speed would be kind of cool. But invisibility is like the top. So of you're my invisible, list. just fly running all over, knocking people over, <laughs> like real and then, hard. And then you go, "Watch out, I'm super strong." <laughs> but I feel like if I'm super strong, I don't have to ask people to help me move. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, Can't you need help carrying that? No, no I'm fine. <laughs> Radioactive right porcupine. Watch what I can do. Like, and then also too, I'm thinking like, if I'm invisible, I could just hop into cabs for free right. and like just go on the bus. Like, do stupid stuff. I wouldn't be a superhero, more or less. I would just exploit it so I get more shit for free <laughs> or not to do stuff. All like, right. So. So, go ahead. All right, so I'm up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I my first power would be um, Mystique's ability to change. And, and that's only so you could go see kids' movies without anybody <laughs> looking at you as to why you're a 35-year-old man. <laughs> You'd be like, hey, look, that's a 10-year-old girl going to the movies alone. Like 10-year-old Goro? A <laughs> girl. Like, no, it's not. That's Justin. Yeah, no, I... That's why I'm invisible. I don't have to pay to get in the movie. <laughs> right. Sit in the back. No, so, so Mystique's shape-shifting ability. Um, Deadpool's healing factor. Okay. 
I want to die. Like, that's why I want to live forever. That's ridiculous. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean you live forever. forever. You but just, you can get messed up and, okay. and come back from it. Oh I don't want to be ugly like Deadpool, though. No, but you got it. You called the Deadpool power. You could have said I, I said his factor, his healing factor. I didn't say the ugliness. It comes, with, right. the, it comes with the whole thing. Uh, but I'm Mystique, so I can shapeshift that crap away. Right. <sighs> True. Um, and uh, beasts, like... Fur. Not the fur. I don't want to be hand size. Furry about. <laughs> <laughs> the Master is... Baton's becoming too hard now. I wish I had those giant beast yeah. hands. I just go crazy on myself. Oh God! <laughs> this giant downhill <laughs> real fast. No, his. I'm um, sorry to your mom. I'm uh, sorry. Um, beast height. He's like, he's like what five he seven? Like his tallest beast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of these little feet. I would have giant beast shoes. No, uh, it's not six is for me. Jesus, beast power. <laughs> the, the, his, like, agility and speed and he's, okay. you know, I don't need to be, like, the Flash, but it'd be cool to have superhuman agility and speed. And Imagine him coming in here just jumping <laughs> everywhere and we're like, Justin, would you sit down already? <laughs> Record the podcast uh, hanging, hanging upside, upside down. upside down from the ceiling. All right, awesome. You ready for mine? Yeah. Go. Okay. So, number one, instead of a healing factor, I'm just going straight pure indestructible. All right, I'm like Sebastian Shaw or one of these other people. I want straight up. I don't need super strength. I don't want it. I don't care to be super strong. I want pure indestructibility. You could throw me in a volcano. I'd eventually just climb. <coughs> Don, okay. Don doesn't want to be super strong because he wants people to help him move. Yeah, <laughs> which so, I do it really fast. I have that. My next spot. Well, let me save the other one for you and explain why. Teleportation, unlimited teleportation, not line of sight like Nightcrawler. Wherever I want to go, I envision in my head I can go there. That would be cool. So the reason why that one is good, because I hate driving <laughs> anywhere. I can't stand being in the car. I would love to just be like, you want me to get out of Florida? Boom, and I'm in Florida. <laughs> Boom, I'm in California. Over there, go anywhere I want, because I'd love to see the world, but I don't like to fly, so I don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> and I would go everywhere. And you could go anywhere, do whatever you want. Eat. If you want to go eat something, just go wherever you want to go. But with that, what I'd be worried about is... Well, I guess if I'm indestructible, it wouldn't matter. Because you need the indestructibility in case I pop up in the middle of a train track. You know what I mean? I'm all right. I want to be able to fly. That way, no one will see me when I pop in. I'll be way up in the sky, and then I just lower down wherever I'm at. That way, if I appear in the middle of the ocean, I don't have to swim all that way back. I can just, you know. So you want to be able to... So you're just going to picture air every time that you're... Yeah, gonna... just picture a I'm popping right above the city and quietly looking around. how can you teleport if you're, like, if it's... If I thing... teleport in the middle of, like, Times Square, people are going to be like, ah, where'd this guy come That's from? That's why you're invisible. That's well, silly. yeah, I only got three, Ken. But if you can fly, why do you need to teleport? Because yeah. flying will take time. And I don't... And I want to be able to, like... It would be cool if you teleport and fly around like the Eiffel Tower, or fly around the Grand Canyon. But then I don't want to fly all the way back to Pittsburgh. I just teleport right back to Pittsburgh. See? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty lazy. It's 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 ultimate lazy, but it's ultimate bad. <laughs> you know, wherever I want. <coughs> how do you, you, know, how do you, you save go. people with that power? Save everybody. What do you mean? Like, there's people in a burning building. I'm just teleporting in, pulling them right out. Not wasting time breaking down doors. You never said you could take other people with your teleporting. Oh, yeah, with my teleportation, I can teleport things, too. So you just have to be taught. Like the movie Jumper with yeah. Hayden Christensen. Oh. Bing, 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 so bing, you're going to be Hayden Christensen. Yeah, I'm Hayden Christensen. <laughs> <laughs> just invulnerable. I made myself Wonder Woman in the one podcast. <laughs> Hayden so that's that. All right, so I had a little bit of an idea, and we're going to talk about it live on the podcast here. Okay. We wanted to talk about the Civil War movie predictions. I think we should do... Our weekend review nerd recap right now for All everybody. Right. And then once that's done, let's record our, our thing, and that'll be a smaller one. We'll put that out after this podcast later on oh, in the week. Let's finish oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, that's cool. That way you guys will listen to this one now. Here our weekend review that we're going to do in the next 10 minutes. And then we'll record a quick Civil War predictions that we'll, re we'll release later on in the week for you, closer to the movie comes out. Yeah, a little midweek. Yeah, you get two podcasts this week. Wow. So there you go. So... Nerd Week in Review, Ken. Frederick. So, a new X Men trailer launched. Uh, we already did a big diatribe about it, but the two big things was you saw Wolverine's claws, and they pretty much said straight up that uh, Magneto is Quicksilver's dad. They did. Yeah, I, I I figured it was only a matter of time before we saw Wolverine. I mean, yeah. I like that they were like big surprise in this trailer. I'm like, really big surprise? Wolverine's in every movie. Yeah. Like, I, I could see if you were like big surprise and it was some completely Mr. Sinister's in this movie. I'd be like, whoa, that's a shock. I was like, oh, it's Wolverine. Uh, okay. And I heard it's not even going to be that long of a cameo. It's just a quick scene, you know. More than more than just him 
shooting his claws out or telling or telling him to f off like yeah, he did yeah. in first whatever that one was I almost said first Avenger yeah that's <laughs> same pretty... movie first um, class but yeah I thought the trailer this trailer made me pretty excited to see it I think I'm now more annoyed that Mystique's like really the leader of yeah, the X Men I don't understand that either but uh, it's they're really pushing her it's just because it's, again, it's playing Jennifer it. Lawrence yeah and hey mm-hmm. Jennifer Lawrence mm-hmm. we got to get her in, in the front. But Cyclops looks cool. Nightcrawler looks cool. And hopefully she dies in this movie. Maybe this, she dies. Maybe she dies, yeah. That's maybe. possible. They, they show like Havoc the, again. They did show Havoc, and he looks so terrible. I, I, wonder, I wonder if they're going to... Is he going to be Scott's brother? He looks like he's having a crazy moment in he all does. this movie. He does. He really does. He just looks like a guy that doesn't have his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> kind of all disheveled. And and then I was really surprised they showed William Stryker. And this is supposed yeah. to be in the '80s, and he looks just the same way he did in the '70s. Yeah. They didn't even give him like a like a gray mustache or yeah. anything like that. Mm-hmm. He just gets off the helicopter. I'm like, oh, there's one striker. And then what? Twenty years from now, when they do X Men or Origins Wolverine, he's, he's like <laughs> seventy old years old. Man, yeah. yeah. So their continuum again, Fox, is so far. They don't out care. There. They just don't even care. No. Nope. Never I thought that over. one scene also looked goofy when it looked like Apocalypse and his horsemen are just hanging out on some rocks talking. Yeah. I was like, what are they having a little powwow? Yeah. Like, we just got to organize. I'm glad you guys came out today. You know, here's what we're going to go do. The, the one thing in this trailer that I thought, was, another thing I thought was cool with Apocalypse is they showed some brief glimpses of he's going to be evolving throughout this movie. They showed like he's gonna look like Ivan is, and then he's gonna. But they showed him on that tablet thing, and the technology. (laughs) And he's looking up his email on his tablet. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yeah, I saw. They showed the technology going, like encompassing him, and he's gonna look like Poe Dameron first. Yeah. (laughs) And then he's gonna turn into. He's gonna give some black kid his jacket, and then he's gonna go (laughs) and some find an ancient temple. uh, Yep. And it's gonna tie into Star Wars. Uh, Yep. That would be epic. But it looked all right. The only thing I guess I don't like about it is the fact that I thought maybe. The horsemen were like mind controlled, and that's why they're they're just openly working for him. Yeah, which I actually like better than him being than him mind controlled. Well, I just don't feel like Magneto would be down with that. Magneto's yeah. not like that. And Storm and Psylocke, I don't know. Maybe if he just found them and they don't know their ways yet, I could see that. But like, I don't know. But they do show that they change Angel and Archangel. I mean, so, that's confusing because, in their, again, in their X-Men universe, Angel didn't come along to the third movie, well, which was in the early 2000s, yeah. so I don't know why he's in the 80s as well, but they've, they've different actors. Well, but they've completely retconned. The, the first three movies don't exist anymore in this movie universe. Okay. All right. Well, <clears> that, huh? yeah, there. But All he right. looks cool. Archangel is cool. Psylocke right. looks great. We talked about that. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll do a little predictions about that further down the road. Later wow. on, comes out the end of May, so yeah. we'll have... Another show about that. Yeah, we'll cool. figure it out. All right. Then second, uh, there's uh, rumors, or I guess it is confirmed now, that Nathan Fillion's going to be in the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. Volume 2, and he's going to be, is it, what's his name? Wonder Man. What's his name? Samuel. Simon Sam, Williams. Simon Williams. And, who's, uh, a, who's an old school Avenger. Yes. I'm not really sure why he's in a Guardians movie. Well, well God. the article that I read is the cameo is posters of him because apparently was, is Simon Williams an actor. He became an actor at yeah, some point. Yeah, he was point. a Hollywood actor. actor and yeah. there's they show posters in the background of something and there's one of him that looks like the new Steve Jobs trailer. Yeah. But it's him playing mm-hmm. Tony Stark. Yeah. And it's like him wearing like a black turtleneck and so looking down like So is he not like actually going to be Wonder Man in these movies? No, he's they well it's maybe left, down the road. Maybe down the road, but this is just supposed to be like an Easter egg teaser. There's like four or five posters with him playing the lead. And while they're in, in the outer background. space, it's on Earth. There's going to be a, apparently there's going to be a bunch of scenes on Earth in this new movie. And they're not flashbacks because the dates that they have on them are current time. Oh, okay. One of the people that they one of the movies he plays is even a deeper Easter egg. It's an icon. Or that, what was his name? Iron, that guy, the Conan ripoff that they used against the X-Men. Oh, okay. Had the lightning bolt. They're doing one of his oh, movies. Oh, Archon. Archon. Yeah, Archon. Okay, yeah. He's one of them, too. So He just guest starting that Weird World book. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of deep rabbit hole Easter eggs shown on this. And I, feel I like hope he eventually is in the universe. I like Wonder Man. And I think he would play a great Wonder Man. I think it would be good. Depends which one they do. Remember when he used to wear like a flying belt pack? Oh, the, it was like a rocket weird, pack on his like belt. He had packs of cigarettes on his belt that yeah. made him fly. It, it made really him fly weird. and he was just strong. Yeah. With sunglasses. And then they got into that he was... He was psionic. He, he was ionic. Ionic. And he would have all that blue energy coming out of him. Yeah. And I think his brother was... Grim Reaper. 
Yeah, was a was a villain. So that yeah. was always cool because he was always fighting his brother. Yep. And uh, I'd like to see him. I think it'd be cool to have him, like, so I forget how his origin works. And There's something with that energy that made him like that. But he was cool. Wonder Man was always cool because he was an actor. He was yeah. like a celebrity hanging out with the Avengers, which was always kind of funny. Yeah, which. So maybe down the road, but that's cool. Maybe wave 14. Wave, yeah, wave 25. But uh, last of the week in review, uh, Game of Thrones uh, premiered this week. Uh, was so. another very strange episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's all you can a say. A show though. that s- has about, what, 26 stories going on? Oh, uh, there's, there's so many storylines. I, I will say, for, for a show that does have so many storylines, uh-huh. they I don't mind it. They they no. do them well. They give just enough of each one to get to keep each story moving. Except for this episode. This it episode, was a kind of exhausting. I, I, I mean, f- I feel like I have more questions now than I did at the end of the the, the cliffhanger at the end of last season. But in general, all of their storylines usually feel it's a natural switch from character to character. There's a lot going on. Like I didn't enjoy. Uh, Tyrion walking around talking to that dude for like fifteen minutes. I'm like, yeah, that could have been like, that could have been know, cut what, back what is going a little on bit. Here, you know, no one's trying to kill him. He's just walking around town like. Well, they're dressed up like they were dressed up like street merchants. Okay, I didn't get that. <laughs> yeah, they even say there's a whole I part. missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, well, you don't have to worry because we're dressed like common street merchants. Uh, okay, and then no one gets, recognized that. Hey, it's the midget again. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they did. It's There's only one midget. Yeah. Like, in all of Westeros. Yeah. yeah. Or little person. I feel like that's drawing as we're using midget. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say midget, yeah, yeah. but whatever. Um, I, so let's be honest. We want to talk about the ending of this show. The ending is the weirdest. So the ending when Melisandre. The gets redhead. N- the, the red woman gets naked. And whenever I was watching, I go, okay. This is just clearly so we yeah. can see some boobs. She's in the taking episode. her top yeah, off she, again. Yeah, yeah no, go figure. Welcome yep. back, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, she takes her necklace off, and she looks like oh. Master Aemon from the Night's Watch <laughs> with boobs. Oh, she got so it got so weird. Yep. They came around. They came. They panned around that mirror, and I was like, "What the <laughs> hell is that?" Just so many old things. And she just got naked and then went to sleep. Yeah. Now my question. How hard were you when you watched that? <laughs> so turned. You paused and were like, was, "Bingo!" Because I that... put my TV in Saran wrap and <laughs> wipe this off. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Leave that in. It's gold. Was that a different actress, or did they put some kind of weird bodysuit? That was on some her? crazy lady from Walmart. They were like, "You want to get your tits out?" Yeah, we know you're 95 years old, but we'll give you a, we'll give you a nickel. Okay, just stand here and look crazy. I'll get them out right now. And, you know, she just stood there naked. What I thought was funny is, you know how when I'm at home alone, I like to take naked naps, right? I love a good naked nap when no one's around. And that lady took that old broad took a naked nap. I was like, that's my thing. You can't take naked naps from me. She took the best naked, scary witch looking. Horrible oh. boobs nap you've ever seen. I don't get what happened at the end of that. I was like, well, she's doing something here. Maybe she's going to re- resurrect Jon Snow or something's going to happen. She just got crazy weird naked and went to sleep. I think the... the Which, the, let me get this in there, didn't make sense because I saw an article where when she was talking to the king that got killed last season. What's his name? Baratheon. Stannis. Er, Stannis uh, yeah. Baratheon. When she was talking to him, his wife, a couple seasons ago, she was naked in a tub talking to his wife, and she doesn't have the necklace on. Maybe she used so much of her power, she went Emperor Palpatine and started getting old. Yeah, maybe. Some people were like, oh, there was magic in the water. I'm like, no, you're not. They just wrote that in this season. They yeah. forgot yeah. That, you know, that she takes her clothes off a lot. And, and it doesn't have that necklace on. Put yeah. that necklace back on right now. Okay? Buy two in I, case uh, one falls off. <laughs> wrap one around your ankle just in case that shit doesn't ever fall off Make again. A belt. Glue it to you because that was scary. Maybe she's going to put that necklace around John and wake him up. I feel like it's supposed to He'll show. Young. Yeah, it's supposed to, I feel like it's supposed to show how powerful the. Lord of Lights. The Lord of Light really is and how old she is and maybe experienced in the ways of mysticism. Yeah, I get that. I just don't know why I went to see a naked, scary old lady. Because it's funny, because all the people are like, eh, hey, boobs. And like, oh, yeah, oh, it, boobs. it really bust a lot of people's bubble, and they were like, woohoo. Oh, oh shit. What's yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. 
I read more more here's a, a thing for your images, more bullshit theories. Bullshit oh. theories. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> what what's that? Man. This just in. This is bullshit theory. <laughs> People People were analyzing um. the shape of the blood like oh this is, is the this blood the dragon puddle thing? the dragon oh. that the blood puddle that Jon Snow left when they picked him up yeah. was in the shape of a dragon and so oh, that's God. foreshadowing that he's really a Targaryen oh. Oh, <laughs> it was in the shape of a dildo it was, it was in the shape of <laughs> foreshadowing that he likes to use those okay that's so stupid. But anyway. I still think he is a Targaryen, but that's besides the point. We'll see. I don't think the blood sweat or anything. It'll take about three or four episodes before he's back. And episode four, shit's going to get real, because it's always episode four. Well, next episode, they're going to Braun. Bran. Yeah. He's, Braun well, let's add another storyline. Where he's me, that. talking to that three-eyed weirdo. You know which part really did shock me in that episode, though, was when they were in Dorne. And they and they and they killed the king. I was like, oh, yeah, I saw that coming, you know. When they go get that prince, I'm like, oh, they're gonna just kill this guy. And then he takes a sword out. And I'm like, oh, this guy's gonna have a badass moment. And he's like, you know, like, what's up? You want to die tonight, bitch? Like, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> Turns his back and gets a spike right through the eye. I was like, oh, guess he's not a character. <laughs> <laughs> guess he's not gonna do anything except get stabbed so right hard through, the, through face. the face. Well, let's be honest. They're both there to kill you. Why yeah. would you turn your? Oh, you honorably said that you're not gonna fight me. I was around. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, and then I love the other ones. You're such. A selfish bitch. Yeah, <laughs> weird. That, and, I hope all those people die. I hate. Yeah, I hate the them one. too. And the other thing I hate about that episode is they made me feel bad for Cersei again. Like, and you don't want to. And I don't want to because I hate her. But now I'm like, I feel bad for her dead daughter. And <laughs> am I on her side now? What's happening? No. Why am I with the and Lannisters that shows, now? That shows the quality of writing yeah. that that character can have. Yeah. Redeemable Any qualities. redeemable Why do I? N- but, like, I'm kind of on her side. I want her and that giant mountain, scary Frank Frankenstein monster. guy to kill all those religious fanatics. And, and, and like, oh, well, I, I want all them dead, but not not because I'm on her side. I just think they're awful people. Yeah, well, F me. What do I know? All right. <laughs> all right, so that's a wrap. Oh, <laughs> we wrapped up Game of Thrones. Let's get right. something else. Well, everyone, don't forget to hashtag... KFP superpower and uh, thanks for listening and, and we will uh, see you next week and we're, we're gonna we're gonna some... keep talking here <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll drop the little civil war predictions later in the week yeah and then next week will be probably a giant cluster of a podcast It'll be where, a, oh, it's gonna we're gonna have cluster. a bunch of people here with us a bunch of guest backs because we're gonna review with spoilers mm. ah so many spoilers Captain America Civil so... War I can't wait. And then we're going to go to Denny's. It's going to be epic. Oh, I can't wait for Denny's. I mm-hmm. took Friday off, so I don't have to worry about oh, going home and going to bed. Cheese is going out. I switched my schedules on Fridays off because these are getting late. So. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see All you right. later. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night.